Israeli Navy. You are approaching an area which is under a naval blockade. On May 30th, Israeli Navy intercepted a six-ship flotilla bound for Gaza. Israeli commandos descended upon the ship. While five of the six ships were boarded without incident, the Navy's attempt to take control of the Turkish vessel Mavi Marmara quickly escalated into bloody confrontation, leaving nine dead and many injured. News outlets worldwide were quick to report on the attack on the aid convoy, which was carrying humanitarian aid. Headlines told the story of the Gaza-bound Turkish aid vessel, part of the protest flotilla, where nine activists were killed. Israel's deadly raid on an aid convoy. The activists were headed to Gaza, Turkish human rights organization. Flotilla of boats bringing aid to Gaza. Yet the identity and motivation of these humanitarian activists is conspicuously absent from most news reports. Who were the people on board the Mavi Marmara? And why was the outcome on this ship so tragically different? The Mavi Marmara was sponsored by Turkish organization IHH, a Muslim Brotherhood affiliate with a radical Islamic anti-Western orientation. The IHH boasts its support of terrorist organization Hamas, and IHH members shown here on the Marmara are quoted to have boarded the boat, having written their last will and testament. This humanitarian aid worker on board the Marmara is shown wearing an Islamic martyr or shaheed outfit, traditionally required in order to ascend to heaven. The theme of martyrdom is echoed by this activist as well. Right now we face one of two happy endings, either martyrdom or reaching Gaza. Yemeni doctor Shayek Naman described the activist's mindset on Hamas's Al-Aqsa TV. The flotilla commander said yesterday, they are people who seek martyrdom for Allah. As much as they want to reach Gaza, martyrdom is more desired. Back on the Marmara, these activists chant Islamic battle cries, reminding the Jews of the Battle of Haibar, where the Arabian Jewish tribe was slaughtered by Muhammad's army. The IDF released footage of the violence, in which activists are seen assaulting the outnumbered soldiers with steel bars and knives. However, Free Gaza, the pro-Palestinian organization behind the flotilla campaign, denies any wrongdoing. Co-founder Greta Berlin offers this account of the incident. We have no weapons. We stand there with our backpacks and with our, our jeans on. The Israeli government continues to reiterate its long-standing policy in support of humanitarian relief in Gaza. Our policy is this. We try to let in all humanitarian goods into Gaza, food, medicine, and the like. And has already began transporting the bulk of the goods captured on the flotilla to Gaza. The involvement of violent Islamic ideology reveals the true face of Free Gaza's flotilla campaign. Yet for all the light it sheds on the real motives behind this incident, it gives rise to even more unanswered questions. Why do humanitarian organizations so readily associate themselves with the world's most violent and anti-democratic ideologies? And perhaps more importantly, why does the world repeatedly ignore this damning association?